Welcome back to Fixing My Faith. So the question today is, how did Jehovah's Witnesses view the Ten Commandments? And what, what, what got me going on that question is, uh, I, I was curious, because uh, commandment number five says to honor your, your parents. And uh, so in my case, I left the organization and I'm still shunned. So I'm wondering, and it works likewise, you know, if the, if the kids leave, the parents shun the kids, if the parents leave, or, or a parent, uh, the kids shun the parents. That's just kind of how it is. And uh, I, in my case, I left in good standing. I just walked away because I didn't agree with some, what was going on. But uh, it's interesting that uh, you get shunned the same, the same way as a disfellowship person, just because you quit. So in some cases, you're even treated worse. So that's quite interesting as well. So today we're going to get right into it. We're going to go right to JW Org and we're going to see what it has to say about the Ten Commandments. Because I was really curious and I want to share this with the world because what I found is new information. It's just recent. It's only two years, two years old. I was away from the organization for ten years. So I thought that we followed the Ten Commandments as Jehovah's Witnesses. But uh, follow through with me and I'll show you what I found. Okay, let's get right into it. We'll just wing it. Uh, right, right in the site here, Jehovah's Witnesses. And why do Jehovah's Witnesses shun those who used to belong to their religion? Shunning, this is a whole other subject. But according to this article, um, uh, it, uh, it's basically up to the elders, you know. And the elders sit down with the person and they tell the person, like in this picture here, um, you know, who they should shun. Because the elders have kind of taken over the scriptures. They, it's kind of their opinion. They've become the doctors of the organization. And uh, that's what I've seen. I was in the organization for 30 years. So if the elders tell a young person something, they, they listen because, you know, it's the elders. Why would you disagree with the elders, you know? So here, um, let's go back here to JW, what are the Ten Commandments? And this was right a, a search that done was done just searching for the Ten Commandments. So uh, what are the Ten Commandments? Well, it gives a list of them right here. Um, we're going to hone in on, we all know the Ten Commandments, worship God, uh, adult, do not practice idolatry, so on the Sabbath, honor your parents, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not testify falsely, do not covet. Those are the Ten Commandments, and you'll find them in various ways written in various Bibles. So why do the list of the Ten Commandments differ? It goes on and talks about that, but we want to focus in on this question. Must Christians keep the Ten Commandments? No. Period. That's it. No period. So I was floored. Like, if you search this, no, you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. So, of course, there's reasons behind that. But, yeah, they're, they're saying, no, you do not have to keep the Ten Commandments. So keeping in mind the Ten Commandments were written by God, this was given, this was right from God, the Ten Commandments. This is not... Uh, some laws that were made by the people of those days. And in those days, there were lots of different laws. Uh, they had the, the Mosaic laws. And uh, these laws meant that uh, they had to sacrifice animals, perhaps, to atone for sin, for sin atonement. And when Jesus came, Jesus says, well, you're no longer under the law because now I died and I atone for all sins. So my death atones for all sins. So no longer are you under that old law where you have to go and buy three doves and uh, go to the high priest and get him to uh, do an atonement for your sins. So that's all gone. But does that mean that uh, the Ten Commandments is, not go is gone from that reasoning? Well, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, um, right here, they say no. No, Christians don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. That's what they're saying. So that's that's it, folks. If you wanted to make this quick and simple, it's no. So let's go a little further. God gave us law, including the Ten Commandments, specifically to ancient nation of Israel. The Mosaic Law is not binding on Christians, and even Jewish Christians were released from the law. The Mosaic Law <clears throat> was replaced by the Law of Christ, which includes all that Jesus instructed his followers to do, namely love. That's what this scripture says. 
here. But uh, Romans 7 and 6 uh, says, but now we have been released from the law. So what does that really mean? Does that mean you're released from the Ten Commands, that uh, the Ten Commands are not applicable? Uh, it's really about the, the uh, Jesus shed blood. No, uh, the old law, I mean, there was so many different sacrifices, but Jesus shed blood atoned for all of that. So what do they come and say? Well, they, they say, are the Ten Commandments relevant today? They go, yes, because the Ten Commandments reveal God's thinking. We can benefit from studying. That's all they're saying. We can benefit from it. Uh, they're based on reliable principles that never go out of date. In fact, many of these principles underlie teachings. That, but, you know, in one hand, no, you're not under it. In the other hand, well, you can benefit from it. So then when push comes to shove, and we go up to the Ten Commandments, where it says, honor your parents according to God's hand, push comes to shove. We go over here, we sit down with the elders. No, you know, son, your parents left the truth. And uh, you can just imagine this meeting here. Your parents left the truth. And, uh, you know, um, that's like worse. That's like worse. That's like a dog eating its vomit. That's what that means. And you don't want to go eat vomit with your parents, do you, son? You see, and this is kind of how they reason. And, and then they go and they open up this, well, you know, son, here's some new information. New information, son. This is right from the latest, the latest. This is the latest. New information. Uh, must Christians keep the Ten Commandments? So here we have it. Uh, we go all the way down. No, you don't have to. If your parents tell you that you, you're not keep, you, you show them from the watchtower. You don't have to. We're, but we are now re, being released from the law. We're released from the Ten Commandments, son. So, son, you tell your parents that we're released from the Ten Commandments. You see, and this is what goes on, folks. This is what goes on behind closed doors. The Jehovah's Witness elders become like doctors in the congregation. Now, if we were to take this one step further and see what the Bible says, well, let's just click here because I, I just opened the Bible here. And uh, Jesus was talking to the crowd on the Sermon of the Mount. And uh, he talks about, he basically recites the whole Ten Commands. If you really look at it here. And the watchtower, they don't, they don't show any of this. But here's what, here's what he said here. G, this is Jesus' words. Uh, Matthew recorded this. And uh, he said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. This is what Jesus says. He didn't abolish the law, but he came to fulfill them. He said, For truly I say to you and to the heavens, and the earth to pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commands and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of the heavens. <clears throat> Excuse me. So isn't that what the Watchtower is doing? They're relaxing. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commands, like honoring your father and your mother, and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of the heavens. And this is what the faithful slave class, they claim that they're the 144,000 going to heaven. They're teaching the, the children to not honor uh, their parents. And they're going against these other scriptures. The Bible's full of them. And we could get into community research, government research, uh, how uh, shunning uh, is really destruct destruction, destructive to uh, the social environment of a community, and especially how it's done here by these elders. And these elders are given that power. They're given the power of psychologists, doctors, family counselors, because the Jehovah's Witnesses do not employ any of those in their religion. These are just two elders. The, uh, this guy might be a janitor, and this guy over here, he's probably cleans windows. That's probably what happens. Now, I know these guys are actors in Bethel, but I've been in the organization for 30 years and half the elders, if you're not a janitor or a window cleaner, you do not qualify to be an elder. You're not humble enough. And that's kind of how Rutherford put it. So you have these janitors here patting this poor guy in the back and showing them this, this new information from the watchtower that says, no, you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments and honor your parents. And they say, don't worry about it. Jehovah's on your side. 
And that's how you're going to save your parents. It's a loving thing to do. It's a loving thing to do. And then they might show them a whole bunch of other scriptures on shunning and blah, blah, blah. But this is what goes on behind closed doors, folks. And I hope and, uh, I hope I opened your ears up. Until next time, <laughs> live your life with love. Bye for now. Well, I'm just curious. Were you taken back as far as much as I've been taken back on this whole Ten Commandment thing? So uh, it was a good question. If there's any other questions that you guys may have that come up, uh, just shoot me a, buzz me a line even on this video, just shoot out a question and I'll try to reply to all the questions. So thanks again for participating, for watching and uh, until next time, live your life with love. Bye for now.